times in three, two, one, we're live. What's up, what's up, my online community? How are y'all doing today? Uh, it's it's funny. I said I was going to go live. Um, I'm looking here on Facebook. 13 minutes ago, I said I was going to go live in five minutes. Uh, and I see somebody commented and said waiting. So uh, <laughs> I goes to show that, you know, I'm still working about punctuality. But uh, we're here, and today we're talking about ADHD and boundaries. So I'm going to let a few more people come in, you know, from Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, actually. LinkedIn got us set up yesterday, uh, YouTube, Twitch, and Twitter. So I'm going to let a few people follow in, and we're going to be talking about ADHD and boundaries. As I like to do when I start the show, I like to see where people are checking in from. So I want to see where everybody's checking in from. I got Ernestine from Philly. Uh, what's up, everybody? OG Gizzo. What's going on, OG? I like the name. Uh, Julie, how are you doing? So we have Pennsylvania in the house. Uh, and of course, I'm in uh, California, Los Angeles. But it says on Facebook, so you all can probably see that. Texas in the house. St. Louis, Denver, Kansas City. Oh, Lord. I hope you're not a Chiefs fan. Uh, Richmond, Virginia, New Hampshire. New Hampshire. How do you say it? New Hampshire. Arkansas, Houston, Memphis, Las Vegas. Uh, Idaho, Maryland, Ohio, Idaho, Tampa, Florida, Las Vegas, Ohio, Atlanta in the house, Nashville. Okay, Nashville, tighten up. <laughs> East Texas, Oregon, Alabama, New Jersey, Missouri. Okay, so we have people from all over the place. Uh, oh, even Canada. Okay, awesome. So uh, we have people, uh, I used to live in Van Nuys. Okay, so Van Nuys is uh, out here in L.A., in the valley so okay we have some people on the uh from the the west coast as well albuquerque new hampshire maui raleigh conroe texas wow so we have a lot of people checking in from all over the place and today we're going to be talking about adhd and boundaries and uh i think this is something that might benefit um anybody you don't necessarily have to have adhd to struggle with boundaries i think there's not a single person on the planet who can say that they haven't struggled, you know, with putting down those boundaries. But I think with ADHD, it's very difficult, you know, to do a lot of things. But when it comes to boundaries, it's difficult for a couple of reasons, right? And let me explain. You know, uh, if you're anything like me, you might have a lot of interest. And you might catch yourself wanting to do something here, something there, something here, something there, right? And as you space yourself out, you know, you really don't, know that you're not good at setting boundaries until you get burnt out. <laughs> the way you get burned out is tough because at that point you're frustrated, you're easily irritable. Um, you know, you, you, you want to, you know, strangle the people that you love. And at that point you have to ask yourself, all right, what went wrong? Why am I in the situation that I'm in at the moment? And normally when you look back at it, you'll see that, okay, I was not good at setting boundaries. I, could not say no to people. Maybe I was afraid of what they would say about me. Maybe I felt like I had to people please. Um, maybe I felt like I could do a lot more than I actually could do, you know, or maybe sometimes, like I've said before, when you agree to do something, it sounds better when you say it, but you have no intention of actually doing it. You know, so when it comes to boundaries, it's very difficult to, um, to put them down. And I think we have to ask ourselves and no two people with ADHD are like, right? Uh, you have to ask yourself, what do I struggle with or whose opinion of me matters more than my opinion of myself? Uh, and that's something that I have to ask myself constantly, you know, and, and I don't, I wouldn't say that I'm somebody who cares about what people think about me, but you know, when you post online and you read comments, you look left and right, um, you know, you see certain things that kind of hurts, you know, and also with ADHD, we're gonna, one, one of these days, we're going to talk about the uh, emotional dysregulation. You know, we're going to talk about managing your emotions and being frustrated and, and things hurting, you know, uh, even if it's something that you read online. But it's very difficult to keep that in check. Um, so you read all these comments, and sometimes that gets into your, your inner psyche, uh, and it might bother you, and you might start to change things, you know, um, subconsciously. You don't realize it. So it's very important to be in tune with how you feel and, you know, that's where therapy or coaching is helpful. Um, but to be a little introspective and figure out what's going on. Why do I feel the way that I feel? Um, and as you start to do that, then you, you can realize, okay, I struggle with this. Or 
when I go um, in these social situations, I tend to, to uh, people please. And um, I'll get the questions in like five minutes. I have like a short rant today. I have like a super long monologue. Uh, yesterday, I was just going on and on. But um, I don't want to keep it too long because I actually want to get to you all's questions. But um, when it comes to, you know, setting boundaries, it's hard because we care about people's opinions of us, right? And the people that we care about, their opinions the most are the people who are closest to us, right? So like, like I said, I gave the example of, you know, somebody commenting, let's say, Dr. Kodra, I hate your videos. I hate your videos, right? I'll be like, okay, that's cool. You know, I'm, I'm sorry they didn't like the video. Maybe next time I post you like. But if you like the video, that's fine because somebody out there connects with the video. And based off of the feedback that I get, I can tell that, you know, it's making some type of impact. People are saying, oh, this helped me out in my relationship. This helped me out personally. So I know that the videos are helping, but it may not have helped that person. Maybe my content wasn't for that person. It is what it is, right? But if a good friend of yours or my mom or, you know, one of my siblings says, hey, I don't like your content, you know, that they could be giving constructive feedback, which, you know, I like all the time. But if they said, I don't like what you do online, you know, that that would hurt because there's somebody that they're close to me. So I'll have to really sit down there and um, think about how I feel about that. And I'm not going to stop. You know, I'm going to double, double down and post more videos because that's just what I do. But it will kind of hurt because it's somebody who came, you know, that's somebody in my inner circle. So the boundaries are difficult with the people that we love, right? That's what I've seen in my personal experience. So somebody online, a random person, yeah, you'll, you'll probably just, you know, brush it off. But like your parent, your sibling, your spouse, your husband, your wife, your kid, you know, a, you know, a grandparent, it might be hard sometimes because we don't want to let them down. But we have to set boundaries because if you have an ADHD brain, right, and you have a hard time starting one thing and finishing it or you know, you start off with this thing and then you jump to that thing and that thing and, you know, you're all over the place. You're going to need an environment that works for you, right? So you're going to have to set boundaries. You're going to have to tell somebody, um, hey, between the hours of 11 a.m. and 2, 2 p.m., if you call me, I'm not going to pick up because that's my protected time that I have to do my, my tasks. I have to do the bulk of my work. That's when I can focus, right? Maybe that's the time that your brain naturally allows you to focus. Maybe you woke up and you took your meds and now it's time for you to focus. So between 11 and, and, and 1 uh, p.m. or 2 p.m., I'm not going to pick up your phone call because I got to take care of myself, right? Like the TikTok, uh, I got to put me first. I got I to gotta put me first, right? And if it's somebody who just they have to hang out with you at 12 o'clock, you know, or at 12, 30, 1 o'clock and they want to play PlayStation or they want to go out and get brunch, you know, you have, you have to disappoint them and say, hey, I can't hang out with you because I need to do this for myself, you know? And the first time that you set boundaries is probably gonna be the hardest time. You know, you, you might lose a couple of friends, you know, you might might lose a couple of relationships, you know, so you gotta be careful before you set boundaries. You have to, you still have to do it. You don't have to do it. You don't have to listen to me, right? But you still may want to do it, but you have to understand that when you start to put some of these boundaries in place, and you start to look at, you know, the the people in your circle, you're gonna see that it, it's a little different. Sometimes the people that you thought would stick around might not be around because your friendship was based off of like, you know, an uneven exchange. And when you finally stood up for yourself, the that friendship no longer had any benefit to them. You know, and and that's the sad thing about life sometimes. Uh, but at the end of the day, your self respect, you know your self-esteem is important. And those are the things that you're going to use to get things done. And as you do things, it's going to improve your confidence. So that's my little rant on ADHD and uh, boundaries. And I want to quickly get into some of these uh, um, comments and questions. Someone said, do not stop posting. Uh, I wasn't going to stop posting anyway. But uh, uh, yeah, I mean, some people won't like the content. Some people will like it. But um, as long as there's one or two people, Y'all can hear my, uh, uh, what's that? I think that's the, um, the, the washer. <laughs> so I'm doing laundry, you know, y'all know I'm going to do it, but folding it is another thing. But, um, usually at the third time I listen, <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep coming with the videos and, uh, that's just part of, you know, making content. Uh, 
had a hard day today, really struggling. Jacqueline, I hope it gets better. Yeah, ba boundaries are key. Boundaries are key. Lachey Queen, I appreciate you too. I hate folding. Yeah, <laughs> I hate folding a uh, lot of too. Uh, do you respond to the inboxes? No, I don't, I don't uh, respond to the majority of DMs for a lot of reasons, for legal reasons. You know, um, you know. so that way y'all know I'm not ignoring you, but it's something that my lawyer and my publicist, depending on the nature of the, the, the DMs, a lot of the DMs, um, you know, you just really can't reply to it. But, uh, you know, whatever I do see, sometimes, like, I'll read the co the, the the comments or the, the message left to me, and I'll just smile. Like, you know, I'll smile knowing that somebody watched my video and they, they you know, enjoyed it and appreciated it. But um, for the most part, I probably won't respond. And that's a way of setting boundaries too. Like I have to, you know, protect myself and, um, you know, that's something that I had to learn, you know, and as you go, you learn these different things, how to protect yourself. And, you know, like if it was left up to me, I would be on my phone all day, every day, just kind of like scrolling through and like saying, Hey, yeah. Oh yeah. You know, cause I, I like people, but you know, I have to understand that, you know, you just can't be, you know, tell people anything. It could be misconstrued as medical advice and things like that. Um, these boundaries. All right. So here's my thing. I will tell you to expect the resistance, right? Like if, in a lot of friendships, here's the sad thing about being an adult. Um, and you know, like I remember being a kid and like you would make friends by going to the park or you go to church or school and you'd meet another kid and I'd be like, hey, you want to be my friend? And they look around and say, yeah, let's be friends. And you hang out with that person that becomes your friend, right? When you're an adult, sometimes people are your friends for different reasons. What can you do for me? Um, oh, your dad is a marketer. Okay, oh, can you put me on here? Do you know this person? Um, can you plug? You know, sometimes the the friendships as uh, an adult are very transactional. And when it's like that, you don't feel loved, right? You don't feel like the person wants you for you. I'm not saying that all relationships are like that. But sometimes when you feel that way, uh, it's difficult, you know, so you put the friendship to the test and, Maybe you stop, you know, doing things for that person or, or, you know, buying them lunch all the time or, you know, texting them. A lot of people, if you stop, if you stop texting, uh, you might have to clip this because this is, this is, this is some real stuff right here. But with a lot of people, if you stop texting them first, uh, you'll never hear from them again. And then you'll be looking at your phone like, damn, like, I, I ain't hear from so-and-so, like. Are they doing okay? Are they are they alive? And you go to the Instagram and it, they're still posting. I'm like, oh okay. So they just went to uh, uh, Yellowstone National Park. Okay, they're they're doing good. And you're like, how come they never texted me? And it's because the friendship was based off of it was one sided. But you put the boundaries up, and you know the resistance that came was like a lack of a response from them. So I would say you have to expect it, you know, and. Think about what are you getting from setting boundaries? You know, you might lose, and you're not going to always lose a friendship, but you might lose that connection that you have with that person, which sucks, but you gain your self-respect. And your self-respect and your self-esteem is what you need to be confident as you do things. So that's, that's, a, good, that's, a, good, that's a good question. I like that. That's a really good question. Um, Rebecca, I, Rebecca, I can't legally talk about what I would prescribe for somebody. Um, I used to get deep into medications on TikTok lives, um, but um, I haven't told the that, um, you know, I, I don't want to, y'all you know, get it, you know, it's medical advice, but um, when you go to a provider and, and you ask them, uh, they're the ones who can, after they do like a full evaluation, they can um, prescribe or something. Uh, next time for, yes, the, uh, Taylor, the emotional thing is, is so, yeah, I, I can't wait for that talk. In fact, I need to put my little, my ghetto board, because I want to forget that. Let me see. And as we go with this show, you know, it's going to get a little fancier, right? It's going to get fancier. Emotional regulation ASG. Because that one's going to be a huge one. And I know when we talk about, when we talk about, like, borderline personality disorder, and I want to stay on topic with ADHD here, but when we talk about borderline personality disorder, we talk about dialectical behavioral therapy, which is what you use to treat that. Um, and it helps you manage your emotions. I think DBT could be helpful for people with ADHD uh, as well. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into that um, 
and of course like my lives are like very ghetto now just all over the place but we're gonna we're gonna make this we're gonna make the environment look like a real show and um i looked at my analytics and i know that um 33 percent of my followers are women from the ages of 25 to 34. so um i don't know what uh, a lady who is 28 years old would watch on, on facebook i don't know but I, i'll i don't know how would it we'll, we'll figure it out um but uh, somebody says this has really helped me understand my 14 year old son i've always been concerned about my son's social interaction uh but your videos have helped me uh lita i'm happy that they can help you understand your son and sometimes you know maybe your son is not speaking up for himself but maybe he had a long day at school you know and then you're just like a concerned mom so you're like what's going on maybe he just needs some space but he's maybe not able to speak up for himself but maybe sometimes you just need some space you know and i think the people who struggle with that are people who are like outgoing people kind of like me you know because like i love coming on here nobody's forcing me or paying me to come on here but like i love interacting with you all like i i have a blast doing this and that's why i'm gonna do this multiple times a week but on days when i wake up and i have no words to say like i have nothing funny to say or, or nothing to to do if i just sit there and i just hang out you know people will be like oh are you okay what's going on i'm, like, I'm just tired like, i ran out of words today like catch me tomorrow i'll have some words but today i'm just i'm just tired right but my friends know me i've already kind of set those boundaries so if you know i'm just quiet They're like oh Cody's just tired maybe he's burnt out maybe he's been doing social media all day making videos or whatever the case is but they know you know so at least in my inner circle i mean i it's a work in progress but like i've got to a point where um they pretty much know how how i do things we aren't old dana i'm not saying that women from 25 to 34 are old uh i hope y'all didn't take it that way <laughs> i hope y'all did not take it that way uh holly i appreciate you and um uh trisha i put for maine I appreciate you. And social workers do a great job. You know, I want to take a, um, a moment to appreciate all of the, the great social workers out there. I know um, that's one of the things I miss about working. Uh, I, I do miss like working in a psych hospital, interacting with the social workers because they were so like, like I never, at least back in Virginia, you know, at Eastern State, I never had to um, really ask for anything. Like when we got a new patient in, we had all the collateral information. Like if I was gonna call somebody's family member, like everything was there for me. And as somebody with ADHD, you know, it takes a lot of time for me to look up things and eh. so it was like laid out for me, you know, and like I've had a great experience with social work. My grandma was a social worker actually, and um she actually met her uh I'm not gonna get too sidetracked, but she actually met her husband um at work. You know, this is back in Ghana and uh because you know I'm from Ghana, West Africa. This is back in Ghana and let me see, probably like the 40s or 50s. But yeah, my grandma was a social worker and my grandfather was also a social worker and they met at work and um, they went on a work trip. And, uh, you know, you know, you know, you know how it goes. You know, one thing led to another and, um, you know, I'm sitting here today, but, uh, you know, <laughs> shout out to the social workers. <laughs> yeah, social workers are amazing. Um, Josh says, Josh, what's up? Josh is OG out here. People at work are able to notice I struggle and they simply tell me to not just stress and be happy. And I'm like, yeah, and, and Josh, sometimes, you know, I mean, you can set boundaries with your coworkers and, and, you know, maybe speak up, but it also takes like, sometimes like if I'm trying to explain something to somebody, I ask myself, all right, like, is it worth it to explain this to this person? Like, are they going to understand me? Um, because like, and, for anybody, like your energy, like your mental energy is important. And especially for ADHD, I feel like your mental like, capacity runs out sooner than somebody who is neurotypical. So if people are just kind of pissing you off, sometimes I just let them have it. I'm like, yeah, y'all got it. You know, because you only have so much energy to give to people, you know. Uh, I feel extremely extremely older than I am at 33, almost 34. Not 34 is not old. 34 is young. 34 is young. 34 is young. Vitamins or supplements to help your mind. Ah, good question, my Erica. You know, I've 
Honestly, you know, I would tell people always, you know, get your labs checked. Maybe your vitamin D is low. You know, make sure that your providers are looking at your thyroid. Um, you know, that will people don't do that enough, right? Um, and when it comes to supplements, uh, I'm the the best thing that I like to tell people is exercise. Um, and you know, I, I get on TikTok and people are like, oh, what about this and that and this and then St. John the Lawrence or Ashwagandha. I mean, different things can be helpful for different people. Uh, but something that anybody can access is exercise, right? And it doesn't have to be some type of strenuous activity. I tell people to at least go on a walk. Go on a walk where you're like in a hurry, you know? Pretend like you're in a hurry, like somebody is flirting with your crush in, off in the distance. And you have to go on and block them. Like if you walk like you're in a hurry and you do it, you know, for 30 minutes every day, um, people have lost weight doing that. People have improved their mood doing that. So I'm a big proponent of exercise, not for, not to lose weight. I, I mean, you can lose weight by it, but exercise for your mental health. Yeah. 34 is not old. 34 is not old. Uh, kids with ADHD and anxiety, um, professional help and a supportive family is what I would recommend. How do you get motivation to do, do those things with ADHD? Uh, motivation doesn't come, uh, you know, doesn't come as much as I'd like for it to come. So, uh, you know, like when I wake up in the morning, like I woke up this morning at like 4.47. I was supposed to wake up at 4.30, but I hung in bed for and tossed and turned around for like 15 minutes. But, uh, you know, I got to wake up at 4.30 because, like, that's just what I do. So I wake up at 4.30, I get to the gym, and I don't really get motivated until I get them and I see that the um, machines are free for me to, get, you know, work out. And then I get that surge of motivation because I'm excited. Like, oh, I got to the gym before everybody else. But for the most part, the motivation doesn't really come until I get into that routine. Uh, uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> That's my boy who's in town. Walking in sunshine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Walks are great. I love to go for walks. Libby, what's up? How you doing? How do you accomplish multiple tasks in one day? Well, Sarah, it depends on what you have to do that day. Um, and... Like the example I gave yesterday was I wrote down three things here. I said that's my to-do list. You have to pick what's the priority. You won't get everything done in one day. Uh, and sometimes if, if you look back at your day, like think about the day y'all had today, right? Think about all the things that you did today. It's six, almost seven o'clock in California, 10 o'clock on the East Coast almost. Think about everything you did today. How long did it take you to do it? You probably did the majority of your work within like maybe two or three hours. We don't really use like the whole eight hour work day or you know 10 hours to get the stuff that we need to get done you get the majority of stuff done in like a couple of hours right and you don't do everything because you can't have your brain working 24 7. so uh, you have to figure out what you must do and what you can let slide until the next day you know so even for me like i've had a pretty productive week but there's still things that i have to do that i wish i would have done on monday but you know actually a good example is like the, the book I'm writing, you know, I got to get these revisions in because I'm trying to get the book out. Um, well, actually not, we have to get the book in by <laughs> this summer because like I signed the book deal, you know, they paid me in advance. So I have to deliver. I can't just say, oh, let, let me get some extra time. No, like we have to get this book in, right? Or else I'm not going to have a book, at, you know, at Barnes and Nobles and everybody is upset. So the book has been more of a priority. So with my videos, I made this a few less videos this week, but then tomorrow I'll double down on that, you know, and I have to, you know, maybe go to the DMV and do a couple of errands, but I put that stuff off because it's not priority. So I think the first part of getting things done is figuring out what you have to do um, versus what you uh, would like to do. Cause you can't cram it all in, in one day. It's gonna, gonna frustrate you. I have ADHD, you know, painting. Oh, I've never done that. I gotta uh, look at the painting. Do I have a therapist? I had a therapist when the pandemic started um, and uh, I moved, I moved states. I want to do everything in one day, that's my problem. It, well, that's your problem. At least you know your problem, you know? Like if you're, you know, going through some type of problem or issue, um, you know, and there's pain involved, right? And you're frustrated, but you know what's frustrating you. You're already ahead of somebody who doesn't know, right? Because that person has to figure out why am I so frustrated and then fix it? But you already know. So now it's just time to do it, right? 
my brain does work 24 seven. Right. That's a, that's ADHD in a nutshell, you know, um, wanting to get to bed at a certain time and not get into bed at that time, you know, so one, once you, but the good thing about your body is if you sleep every day at say 10 o'clock, right. The body will get tired naturally around eight forty-five, nine. 9. The body knows, okay, this is the time that we sleep. Um, but for people who are working the three to 11 shift, or if you're in school, um, it can be very difficult to have that consistent uh, sleep cycle. I'll accomplish more. Oh, that, I wish I could say the same, Judy. I wish I could say the same. Hopefully, you know, um, uh, a combination ADHD. Um, Louis says my psychiatrist have a combination ADHD. Probably combined type. That's what I'm thinking. Now, I, I don't know what they said, but um, most likely combined type is what I think they mean. So what is like a combination of like the inattentive symptoms and the hyperactive and impulsive symptoms, right? So you might, you know, like zone out mid conversation, but at the same time, you might also interrupt people while they're talking, right? And that's just oversimplification. Um, let's see, I sleep like three hours because ADHD is like having Yeah, so that's the thing. When, like right now, look, for the people who are watching this live, whether you're watching on Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, regardless of wherever you watch this live from, you're probably like at home, chilling, watching on your phone, or just kind of like relaxing, right? So if you're watching this live, you're probably not doing anything that requires a lot of, you know, sustained mental effort, right? Like balancing your checkbook or paying your bills or or organizing, you know, the dishes, because you're just watching this on like Facebook or something like that. You know, so this doesn't take a lot of like mental uh, uh, energy um, versus if you're doing something that you didn't like, you know, that would be boring. So it'd be really difficult to um, keep up with that. You know, so that's why, I mean, I think uh, I didn't plan for these labs to go, um, you know, at this time or for it to be like a late night with Dr. Cordor. It should be right here, right? The rest late night, right. But um, I think it's helpful that, you know, we, we, we put them at, at night. Attitude Magazine, yes, I'm, I'm a big fan of Attitude Magazine. If you are not familiar with that, I would definitely check it out. Uh, Kimberly is at work. Kim, Kim, don't get fired. Don't get fired. I don't know if you're, you're watching from the break room or if you're a secretary, uh, you know, maybe with some headphones, like, like watching, like off to the side and typing. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> don't, don't get fired. Uh, I have a therapist, my primary prescribed me the meds, a uh, counselor. All right, so counselor and therapist, I mean, so like if you're a therapist or psychotherapist, like it's like an umbrella term. So like a therapist is anybody, you know, within the mental health space, right? So social worker, um, uh, even I would call a registered nurse a therapist in a sense, but most people don't think it is. But traditionally, a, re uh, uh, a therapist would be like a social worker, a psychiatrist, a psychologist, a psychiatric nurse practitioner, a psychiatric PA, um, you know, uh, that's the first five that come to mind. But that's what you think about when you think of a therapist. Some therapists can prescribe medications, right, if they're a prescriber. If they're on the psychiatry side, if they're on the psychology side, it's more so uh, therapy. It's, it's kind of difficult for people to understand. Um, so like when people ask that question over and over, like it's not a bad question. Cause I mean, if I, if I wasn't um, like in this field, like I'd be on uh, Google you know, or, or YouTube trying to figure out what the answer is. Uh, it says uh, better Collins is quicker. You have ADHD, that's the reason you have ADHD. Right, yeah, no, so I have ADHD, but the reason why I'm helping is cause I enjoy it. Um, <laughs> that's the, that's the, the honest answer. Like I enjoy, like I enjoy lives, you know, because lives you get the the live feedback. That's why I like this type of show. Like I want to invest more into it and turn it to like a real show or like this make it more official. But I enjoy this type of thing, you know. Um, if I had ADHD and I didn't like like being on camera, like I wouldn't do this because if I don't like it, I'm not gonna look forward to it. And then it's something that I have to do, and I'm like ah. And I'm not consistent with it, um, but like I, I enjoy this, so that's why I do it. Um, and you know, people with ADHD, if you enjoy something, it's not hard for you to do. 
hope that makes sense. High rose executive dysfunction. Uh, this is coming from Josh. Or like indecision when trying to plan a day where you know each thing may take too long. So you move on to another thing and continue to do that until you realize you missed out on everything and the day is over. What's that about? Yeah, the indecisiveness um, <laughs> with ADHD is real. Uh, and like it's also pattern recognition. Think about it. So for me, like I like I realize that sometimes like I'll be in between doing one thing and another thing. And I'll be like, oh, what should I do? And I can spend like maybe an hour or two thinking about what I should do. So now for me, the way I kind of combat this is I'm like, all right, I need it. Like regardless of whatever I do, it doesn't matter what I do. I just have to do that thing. So if I'm in between like, oh, should I post another video? Or I'm about to write a, a, a plan for another skit. Or I'm going to write like another rap. Should I do this or not? I'm going to either do something or do nothing, right? And I, it's it's about choices. Like, am I going to do, am I going to write this skit? Because um, I think this will be funny, but I think it'll be relatable. I think it can help people out. And if I want to do that, then, then I need to do that. Josh, I have to do that. But if I'm like, uh, I think I might want to hop on the Oculus or I want to play uh, PlayStation because I just got PlayStation 5 today. Um, uh, so if I want to play PlayStation 5, then let me hop into PlayStation and let me just play the game. But the inner size of this does nothing for you. Like you spend hours and then you spend two hours deciding and then you do one of the things, but you're so burnt out from trying to decide that you don't do it well. So the key is to, to just do something. Sometimes you just have to do, right? Just do something, A or B, doesn't matter. Do something, obviously, if one thing is due at midnight and it's a discussion post, you want to play PlayStation, like, yeah, please do your discussion post because, like, I don't want you to, to fail, you know, your online class. But but we have to pick something, you know. And when you're making hard decisions in life, uh, I think ADHD can, can make it hard to make some of these difficult decisions. And um, the way I look at it, you'll never know the alternative, you know. And when I was deciding to walk away from forensic psych and, and moved to California to do social media, like I would not have known, like if I stayed in Virginia and I said, all right, I want to do forensic psychiatry, I would not have known what an extra year and a half would have done for me out there. I don't know, like probably would have made more money initially. Yeah. But like, I don't know what it would have done for me in my social media career. Right. So I said, I want to go to LA. Like I want to kind of start all over and see if I can make it in social media. I think, I think, I, I think I can help people online. I think I can make funny and relatable content. So I did that. But if I had stayed in Virginia, it wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world. And I wouldn't have known like A or B, but it's more so about you make a decision and you make that the right decision. But you can apply this to, should I work out tomorrow or should I um, clean my car? You know, should I take out the trash in the morning or should I go for a walk? You know, should I date this person? Or date that person like you'll never know but don't date person b and then you're half you no know, you've been with that person for a year and then you're like oh man if i dated that other girl like i think maybe like because you, you you don't know you don't know the alternative you know so that's what gives me peace like you have no idea what the alternative is you know so pick one thing of course like don't be impulsive think about it talk to your your family members and um of course you know if you're a praying person like me you know pray to god get some sleep and you know clear your mind but pick one thing and make that the right decision because you'll never know what the right answer is honestly uh i paid a fence for three hours oh <laughs> but that's not like it's fun painting a fence uh what do you do if you need help but can't afford to katie that's a good question katie love um I do not know the answer to that. Uh, I think, um, hmm, I think, you know, tapping into free resources like like this, I think that's helpful. Um, you know, uh, using Facebook Reels or Instagram or, you know, TikTok as a search engine to like look up mental health advice, you could get some peace from that. Um, it, but it doesn't replace professional um, medical services, you know, because nothing does like professional medical services is just that. Uh, so I would say if you can't afford help, of course, you know, talk to family members and friends, look up affordable therapy, 
or anything you can find, or maybe if you love somebody, look up grief and support groups in your area. Uh, but the most important thing is to understand that, like, you know, if you're in a situation where, like, you're having, like, a mental health crisis, then at that point, you got to get to the, um, you know, the, the ER, urgent care ASAP. Uh, so that's when, like, you, you have to go. Uh, but hopefully we get to a point in this country where people don't have to wait until a crisis before they can get mental health. Uh, help. Uh, I don't know. And um, I keep throwing out, you know, what I would do if I was like a governor or something like that. But uh, I, I don't want to get in trouble with my team and start throwing out ideas. But I mean, if if I was in office, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I would have some ideas. But I have some ideas. You go to the kitchen to do dishes and 30 minutes later, you're Googling <laughs> the Persian empires. Libby, that's funny. I might have to use that for a skit. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, yeah. Daisy, I pray. You know, I pray. I, I could pray more. I know that. I know that much. I could pray more. But um, yeah. I mean, for me, that's that's something I do. Um, Sharice, I appreciate that. And that's a nice name too. I appreciate that. Um, Judy, yes. I'm I'm happy I chose social media, and I'm not gonna lie. You know, when um, you know, when I made a decision, there's a little bit of guilt, you know. I felt that, you know, you're like there's already a mental health crisis, right? And there's already a lack of people who care. So I felt that I was leaving, you know, and like for me, um, I remember uh I like <laughs> I told, you know, my coworkers and you know, I told the medical director, you know, like obviously I put in my my month um notice you know because i have to give a month instead of two weeks because it makes sense i have a whole i have like 20 something patients you, just, you can't just give two weeks notice and just dip out but um as my coworkers found out they're like oh no coach are you leaving like no where are you going and you know and i didn't say, say out i didn't say out the bat i'm going to to los angeles to do this but i was like i'll just go home you know and just you know go back to nashville and, and clear my mind and figure out what's next but um i mean this was our, always a plan to come to LA and do this. And there was a little bit of guilt, you know, like leaving my patients. And, uh, you know, I made an effort to tell them that I was leaving before um, they found out from somebody else. But I remember one of my patients, um, I, I can see his face um, in my head right now. Dang, he was a cool, cool ass guy. He uh, he came to me and he was like, uh, <laughs> he's like, Dr. Sofa, I heard you leaving. And I was like, Oh, I was I was coming, I was trying to tell you all that, you know. But um, I guess somebody told them. But uh, yeah, you do feel a little bit of guilt because like you're leaving in the middle of a pandemic. But um, like I like now I know that like looking through comments, like I'm still, you know, helping people just you know in a different way. So it's not like I, you know, I left to just you know. But even if even if I left to just leave all this and never post on social media, there's nothing wrong with that, right? That might be a boundary that you you might have to set for yourself. Um, uh, alarms. Oh yeah, I'm a big fan of uh, alarms. Uh, and I like what you said. Sometimes you can find a sliding scale. Um, uh, I've been diagnosed with the sense from ADHD. Um, yeah. So, so Keisha, you know what? I uh, I just thought of an idea, and that's why I like coming on, on these live shows because I think of ideas all the time, right? And while my show is so ghetto enough, I can do this. Um, uh, so what I'm writing down right now is I'm thinking of a video idea and I have like a, a seven page document of video ideas so we know what they all won't get done right but one of them might make the cut and they can help people out but um, I thought about a video to on how to maybe tell your doctor that you think your diagnosis is wrong um, you know because sometimes you you know, you have a hard time talking to like, you know, a professional or telling your doctor or nurse practitioner or provider or PA, hey, I think my diagnosis is wrong. You know, um, uh, you know, you might feel like you're offending them because you're like, oh, they're the expert. They went to school. But, uh, you know, you can always ask what I would do is now I'll, I'll still make a video, you know, I'll put it on my list. But you can always ask them, like, why do you think I have ADHD? You know, and then they should like go through their thought process and say, oh, well, I see this, this and that. Or why do you think I have depression? Or why do you think I have bipolar disorder? And like get their rationale. 
and they should be able to justify that. I don't think that's asking for too much. Um, and let them spell it out for you. Uh, if they they refuse to, or you don't understand it, or they just, you know, if you can't understand it, maybe you can get a second opinion. But uh, ideally, you, you'd want somebody who would like explain to you why uh, they diagnose you with X, Y, and Z, and and at least walk you through the the, the treatment plan. Um, you know, I, in, in a perfect world, but as you know, it's not a perfect world. Um, don't let my I know seven year old finish sense but I know she's gonna say, uh, April, yes, I would do that. Now, keep in mind, I'm not a parenting expert, uh, but you know, I think if you let your um, uh, seven year old, um, I, I, I just think it's it's almost like you're giving, you know, you're giving your child like you no know, respect, you know, you let your second grader finish what they're saying, uh, um. You know, without you like jumping in, then you're teaching them that okay, like everybody deserves a chance to speak. Um, but like obviously when they grow up, sometimes they'll be cut off by other people. But I think at home is a good place to maybe start teaching them that. I think, I think. I'm not sure. I think I love VA and um Marilyn, you made the right choice. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm 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 definitely uh, happier here. Uh, um but it's not like a nothing against Virginia or Los Angeles is some bright and sunny place. Um, no, it's just more so that I'm I'm doing what I feel like I should be doing. And I'm having fun with it too. Like this is fun, you know. Um it's leading to cool opportunities. Uh and oh, speaking of that, um, I do want to say that I posted on Facebook here as well that there's a documentary called Profile the Black Man. Um, it'll be on Discovery Plus and OWN, which is Oprah's network. And um, I was featured in it. We recorded this last year, and um, I couldn't talk about it for a couple of months because that's how the industry works. But, um, yeah, you know, uh, it'll be a great documentary. Uh, you all should watch it. Um, I took the crew, like, behind the scenes. I showed them how I make my, my videos, what I talk about, um, you know, all the dancing and, and how we make it fun. Um, and they got to interview some people who um, know me, a couple of my content creator friends. In fact, um, my good buddy who uh, flew into the documentary when we filmed last year, he's back in town again. Um, so we're just hanging out downstairs playing PlayStation. Um, a good buddy of mine, Renee, is a trainer. He was in there. Uh, one of my good friends, uh, Dr. Uh, Thompson, she's a psychiatrist. She was in the documentary. So uh, I can't wait um, for you all to, to watch that on uh, um, the Discovery Plus uh, slash own um, network on TV, uh, you know, and maybe I'll do like a watch party and, you know, I'll watch it myself and, you know, like maybe I'll record my reaction to seeing me on TV, but uh, it was just a really cool opportunity. So um, I want to thank Andrea Lewis, uh, you know, who was, uh, I think she was a producer slash director um, and the executive producer, um, Beyonce's mom, Tina Knowles Lawson. Um, this is a cool opportunity for me to talk about what I do. Uh, you know, people enjoy these little videos and all this stuff. So I, th I just think it's, it's super cool. Um, so yeah, February 12th, when that series comes out, you all just, um, you know, check it out if you like, and I appreciate that. Is a documentary appropriate? Uh, so Thema, um, I, you know what? I don't know. I don't want to lie to you. Um, I do not know if the documentary is appropriate for kids, uh, at least my part my part is is appropriate um but i haven't seen it like i have not seen post-production at all but i know i was just talking about what i do like i make videos in my kitchen about mental health i turn into skits and songs and i make it fun and i watched all my friends be recorded so um everything that was done in my house here in la is like appropriate for kids um but i don't know you know there's other you know, men who were featured in this documentary. So I don't know if it's appropriate for kids. So I don't want to say that it is, and it might not be. Um, and even my part, I don't know how I was going to, like, when, when y'all watch it, I'm watching it for the first time. You know, I'm going to hope that my voice doesn't sound too <laughs> too, too wild on TV. So uh, we'll see. Uh, Judy, yeah, my friends are making me do a watch party. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to probably do that. And uh, Liliana Moore, uh, it's called Profiled uh, the Black Man. That's the documentary name. And um, if you look at my Facebook page, it's on there. It's also on my IG as well. So, um, yeah, it's 
yeah, it, it's, it's gonna be something. So um, I'm I'm super super excited for that, and I appreciate you all's uh, support. Nicole says, I see you on TikTok. Nicole, what's up? How you doing? How you doing? Let me get a couple more questions here real quick. Um, I have random thoughts in the middle of sentence and pause that I try and find my way back and finish it because I get embarrassed. Yeah, uh, 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 is it L-A-R-A is Lara, Lara, Lara. Um, yeah, uh, there's nothing wrong. I think if you're talking to your friends and you kind of lose your train of thought, you know, and they know you, they won't be embarrassed. But when you meet somebody, it can be a little bit, you know, embarrassing. But, um, I mean, you know, as you, over time, you, you can just own it, you know. And for me, like, I'm this is live, right? I can't cut this. Like, this is live. If I forget my train of thought, I'm just going to move on, right? I'm going to make my show more official as we go. But if I, if I forget it, I'm like, it is what it is. I'm going to just circle back around. Um... And Therese, I appreciate that. Yeah, you, you all tune in. I, I know I'll be watching, obviously. Um, and uh, Vian says, how do you not get overwhelmed with all the questions as I add another one? I, I mean, I've been, I've practiced. Like, I've been going live on Instagram and TikTok and other platforms for, like, two years now. So I do my best to get the, the questions. Um, and when I do this live, like, I, I start off talking for the first 10, 15 minutes or so, and then I ask the question. So I do my best to get to the questions. And, you know, if something like catches my eye and I think about it, like, oh, this can provide like a lot of value to a lot of other people, not just that person, that's probably a priority question that I, um, uh, that I answer. But yeah, the question is coming fast. So there's no way you can get them all, you know. Uh, what are some tips uh, to help my... Oh, this will be my last question to answer, and then, dang, it's already seven. I got a meeting in 48 minutes. Uh, what are some tips to help my spouse be more involved, helping find ways to help me with it? Annabelle, finding ways to help you with what? Can you let me know? Annabelle, can you let me know? And while I'm waiting for Annabelle's question, I'll talk about other stuff. Uh, last one for your OG. Does imposter syndrome and depersonalization correlate with uh, ADHD? Uh, it could, it could, but um, an imposter syndrome is essentially where you know you you have a hard time realizing that you are who you are, right? The things that you're good at, you don't give yourself credit for it. You feel like you know you don't measure up to people who you know you think are above you, but y'all on the same level in a nutshell. Um, but uh, yeah, so um, those things maybe ADHD can make those things worse, Josh. But um, I'm not sure, like, the direct link between the depersonalization and um, imposter syndrome with ADHD. But it, it, it is definitely a good question. Um, definitely a good question. And ADHD and depression is a struggle. And it's worse when life doesn't have a routine. Yeah. Like, I'll say, I said it when I say I think I said yesterday, and I'll say it again. Like, routines will save your life, you know. Um, knowing that you have to do something at a certain time. And even as I do... You know, this show right here, I haven't announced that I do this live show uh, at 6 o'clock California time. But, you know, I'm proving to myself. What did I say on Monday? I said, I'm going to do this show Monday through Thursday, 6 p.m. California time. And I'm going to be consistent with it. So I'm doing that. And as I, I'm consistent with it, then I'll ask my graphic designer to make, like, promotional graphics. People come and watch the show, but I'm proving to myself right now. It's like a little trial period, you know. I have every intention to continue this and see it through, but I'm proving to myself that okay, this is a routine that we follow. Boom, boom, boom. Normally, I have one more meeting after this with one of my assistants, so like, I'm getting into that, um, you know, routine. Uh, what what did Anibal say? Anibal said with um, ADHD. Or, oh, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. Um, Keisha, you keep your word to yourself by doing it, you know. Like I, just, like I, I just like with this show, I just do it. Like I see myself as like I'm a show host, you know. Like I host this show, I just do it. I have to do it. I'm a content creator. I make videos. I have to make the videos. Like that's what I do. Like I'm a writer. I've written a book. I'm writing a book now, so I have to write the book. You know, I, I like I kind of like forcing a kid to do something that they don't want to do until they kind of like it, and then they do it. You know. Some kids won't, you know, always like it. But let me ask that question about Annabelle. 
What are some tips to help my spouse be more involved? Helping to find ways to help. All right, so pretty much Annabelle wants to know how her spouse can be more involved uh, um, by helping her with her ADHD. So I think Annabelle, you probably, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're probably somebody who you got diagnosed late, um, like when you're already married, right? So when you, uh, you know, when you're dating your husband and, you know, when you are engaged, before you're married, you probably didn't know that you had ADHD, right? Well, I'm assuming that you didn't, but either way, you have it now and, you know, you want him to help you out. I think the first thing to do is to try and get him to understand, you know, um, like let him understand what it is and how it affects you. Because otherwise, you know, he might just be like, oh, she just lay everywhere. Um, she doesn't respect my time. What's up? Like, you know, like I feel disrespected in the relationship, you know, so maybe when he can understand what it is and how it affects you, then he's like, oh, shoot, I don't think she's a bad person. And like, we know you're not a bad person, right? But he might think to himself, okay, like, she just struggles with this. And it goes from you versus him to y'all being on the same team. And he's like, all right, okay. So how can I help you out with this, right? And then the same way, like, you have to help him out too with whatever he struggles with. You don't have to, but you might want to, right? So the things that you're naturally good at that take, like, a little bit of energy out of you, you can highlight that type of stuff. You know, it's going to boost your confidence. You know, uh, it's going to make you feel like you're capable and good at doing things. Like you're not good at everything, but the things that you're good at, highlight that and figure out how you can use that to benefit your relationship. That's what I do. Like when I come on here, if y'all ask me to talk about um, like like furniture and home, home decor and, um, you know, like, if y'all ask me to talk about that stuff on live, I wouldn't do this live often. I, you know, because I don't know, I don't know much about like home decor and, and whatever. Like I, that's not my thing. So if you ask me to talk about it, I'm gonna be sitting here. I'm gonna be fumbling over my words, right? But if you ask me to talk about this, right, or if you ask me to talk about life as a content creator, or living in LA, or growing up in in uh, you know in Norway, or living in Tennessee, or being from West Africa, like I can talk about that because. Obviously, that's my life, you know. So whatever I'm good at, I'm gonna highlight that and then, you know, put that at the forefront. Whatever I'm not good at, I'm not gonna come out here and talk about it. But if it's something that I have to do, I'm gonna figure out how can I get help. Who could I pay to help clean my house um, or help me with this or help me with that? So figure out what you're good at and offer that. You know, figure out a way to help the 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 relationship and the marriage by focusing on what you're good at and figure out what you suck at. And then let him know, communicate, so that way it doesn't look like you're just like checking out of the relationship. That that's what I would say. That's my um my um best advice. And let me ask a really, really, really good question. Um, and somebody asked somebody um, and and that was my last question. But I want I want to make this point real quick. Let me ask a really good question about ADHD and higher sex drive. And uh, somebody either DM me this or ask me this question. Um, but it's something that like, I want to talk, I want to have like a whole separate line for that because sometimes like ADHD is not just like one thing. It's a cluster of symptoms. Right. And, you know, based on how it presents, you may have a higher sex drive or you may have a, a lower sex drive or may, you may have sensory issues, which impact your relationship. You know, it might make it harder for you to be intimate. Uh, so it's actually... There's actually a study that I gotta uh, I gotta find that study, but it I gotta find a study before I, I speak specifically about it because I hate to throw out things that I can't back with evidence-based information off the top of my head. But the study, the nutshell, in a nutshell, said that uh, a good group, a great deal of people who have ADHD have some sort of sexual dysfunction, maybe high sex drive, low sex drive, um, you know, or sometimes sensory issues or so many different things, even even mood swings, right? You know, you can, you can have the, the most attractive partner in the world, you know, you love them, you know, you all have kids together, whatever the case is, right? If y'all get into a, a big argument, nobody's gonna want, you know, to do the Mickey Ficky. Y'all just wanna like, you know, rip each other's heads off. So, so many things can lead to reasons why you're not feeling it, you don't wanna do nothing, or, 
you feel like you want more of it, more and more of it, and you feel like you're never satisfied. So that's actually um, <laughs> let me a week, let me, you know what? Let me says, write it down. You're right. I was actually gonna uh, write it down. Um, <laughs> it's funny because you're picking up on my, on my tendencies because like right now I'm like, oh, ADHD sex. That's that's a good ass idea, right? But like I get off of here and I go play, you know, Madden, you know, play football on the PlayStation, and I like I just I might just completely forget about it. But um, yeah, actually, that's that's really that's a good idea. Um, and actually, when you even ask me something like that, I like it because I'm like, you know, what, let me go back and you know, let me do some research. Or I got so many friends who are you know counselors, therapists, nurse practitioners, and psychiatrists. Let me text them. Let me see what they think. What articles they have um because like i'm fascinated by, by that uh you know like is it hyperactive you know um or hypersexual or hyposexual um yeah like I, i'm actually very very um um intrigued uh by that topic um yeah i'm great as a person i say no uh i show a significant other some of your skits they do a great job oh i appreciate that I appreciate that. You know, we're working on the skits and ways to, to make them um funny and, and uh relatable and um and uh someone asked about medical marijuana. I I've spoken about that, but we need to have a whole uh live on marijuana uh, as well because you know I can't just endorse it for everybody, but we, we do need to talk about marijuana. Just have one line for marijuana and um and ADHD. But uh I'm about to get off because it's been Past hour, I don't want to keep these too long. I don't want to lose people's attention. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, today's what Thursday. All right, so I'll be back on Monday. You know, like I said, Monday through Thursday, we're gonna keep it consistent. And I mean, y'all already watched. So here on Facebook, I have like 145,000 people keeping me accountable, right? And um, on that, I will say, I'm gonna be. I'm not the most consistent person. But I'm not going to be surprised if I can come out here Monday through Thursday and go live every day at 6 o'clock California time. I won't be, um, carry out. Yeah, I, I got you. I won't be surprised um, if I, um, and I might just have uh, an OG maybe send me this stuff. So, um, uh, I wanna, you know, it's more organized. But I won't be surprised if I go live consistently uh, because. You know, I have so many people here watching on Facebook. So that serves as some form of external accountability for me. So it's going to be pretty hard to forget when all these people are reminding you, like, like you know, it, it's hard to not be consistent. So, uh, you know, if y'all can pattern your life in the same way and have something, some external entity that forces you to do a certain thing every day, there's a good chance that you're probably going to do that. So uh, I will say that. And um Carrie, I wrote it down. I wrote it down. Marijuana, ADHD, sex, marijuana. I, I got it down there. And um, yeah, it's been a been quite a busy week um, for whatever reason. But I have a lot of good content planned for you all. And um, I can't wait to get back uh, on Monday with whatever topic I come up with. Uh, maybe we'll have a schedule. You know, maybe we can turn it to like a real, real show. I uh, have a schedule so that way you all, if you really want to see one topic, you can tune in on a certain day. So um uh, let's let's get a little bit more organized. Um, and yes, Lakeisha, I actually have videos about um, ADHD in boys because I talk about ADHD in teenage girls a lot, but not in the boys as much. And um, I'm in uh, the California time zone. It's like PS, um, PST, I think that's what they call it, PST. So Pacific Standard Time, I think. Either way, if it's not, now that's, that's what we need to call it. So I'll see you all Monday, and uh, I can't wait. We have some some uh, pretty dope topics, and uh, I can't wait to get to it. So peace, peace, peace. I appreciate y'all.